Good evening and welcome to the worship of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this our last Wednesday in Lent. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open my lips, and my, and my mouth will declare your praise. praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make, Make haste to help me, O Lord. Lord. Glory be to the Father, and, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit. as and it was in the beginning, is now, now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, Lamb of our salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord, the Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and foes, it is they who stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war arise against me, yet I will be confident. One thing have I asked of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple, for he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Our Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 59. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, or his ear dull, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he does not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies, your tongue mutters wickedness. For our transgressions are multiplied before you, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us, and we know our iniquities, transgressing and denying the Lord, and turning back from following our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart lying words. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from 2 Timothy chapter 2. Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, the offspring of David, as preached in my gospel, for which I am suffering bound with chains as a criminal. But the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is trustworthy. For if we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Our first gospel reading is from Mark chapter 8. And Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they told him, John the Baptist, and others say Elijah, and others one of the prophets. And he asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Christ. And Jesus strictly charged them to tell no one about him. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed, and after three days rise again. And he said this plainly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. And calling the crowd to him with his disciples, he said to them, 
If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Our second gospel reading is from Mark chapter 14. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all fall away, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though they all fall away, I will not. And Jesus said to Peter, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. But Peter said emphatically, If I must die with you, I cannot deny you. And they all said the same. And they went to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter and James and John and began to be greatly distressed and troubled. And he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch. And going on a little further, he fell on the ground and prayed, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me. Yet not what I will, but what you will. And he came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. And he came still the third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Deliver me, O Lord my God, for you are the God of my salvation. Rescue, Rescue me from, from my enemies. enemies. Protect, Protect me from, from those, those who rise against, against me. In you, O Lord, do I put my trust. Leave me not, O Lord my God. Rescue, Rescue me from, from my enemies. enemies. Protect, Protect me from, from those who rise against me. me. Deliver me, O Lord my God, for you are the God of my salvation. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. It turns out that long-winded sermons can be hazardous to your health. It's in our Bibles. On the first day of the week, when we were gathered together to break bread, Paul talked with them, intending to depart on the next day, and he prolonged his speech until midnight. There were many lamps in the upper room where we were gathered, and a young man named U U Eutychus, sitting at the window, sank into a deep sleep as Paul talked still longer, and being overcome by sleep, he fell down from the third story and was taken up dead. The story does turn out well. Paul does go down and raises him from the dead. Falling asleep in church is something most of us have struggled with at one time or another. You may have heard the old story about a man who came to church each Sunday, but he always nodded off during the sermon. So the pastor devised a plan. During one service, the pastor asked his congregation while the man was sleeping, all who want to go to heaven, please rise. And everyone stood except the sleeper. Then at the top of his voice he bellowed, All those who wish to go to hell, stand up now. Only the man who was sleeping stood up. And he looked around and he said, I don't know what we're voting on, Reverend, but it looks like you and me are the only ones for it. Now surely all of you have been so tired that you cannot fight it off any longer and suddenly you're out cold. So it should not be that surprising to us that Peter, James, and John did not have the willpower to stay awake. They succumbed to exhaustion as they sat in the Garden of Gethsemane. 
At the same time, Jesus began his agony while in prayer, mere feet away. It's been a harrowing time for the disciples of Jesus. So much has happened, and the frequency of its happening has accelerated. Peter, stay awake. Ah, leave me alone. I'm going to rest my eyes for a minute. Who knows if they've even slept since Jesus gave his sermon about staying awake for the last day, or if they were even taking it literally. The grass is soft, it's dark, the air in the garden is peaceful and cool. Which of us would not have nodded off? What could be less motivating to pay attention than listening to someone else pray? Dozing would seem to be an inevitability. Of course, the disciples falling asleep was sinful. Yet again, we may be prone to believe we would have acted differently, perhaps. The point of us seeing the disciples behaving so sinfully is not to gloat that we might be better than them, but to illustrate the identification of sinners, not only other people who are sinners, but most especially ourselves, as sleepyheads whose willing spirits cannot overcome the weakness of our flesh. And it's also a reminder that all of these events transpired as they had to, according to God's design. It also serves to show us that the Lord and God of all, Jesus Christ, is the one who neither slumbers nor sleeps, whose eyes remain wide open to God's will, with his face yet set toward the cross for you and for me and for all the sleepy-headed sinners everywhere. When the fullness of time had come for Jesus Christ to fulfill all righteousness for our salvation, it was he who needed to be the one, the only one, awake, to suffer the flames of hell upon the cross and to sleep the sleep of death in the tomb. We look upon our Savior this evening as he kneels in earnest prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, right here before our eyes. We behold the open eyes of Christ as he pray, prays sorrowfully, troubled, to the point of death, his sacred heart crushed under the weight of that which awaits him the next morning. It was the crushing weight of our sins. We see his brow wrinkled and contorted in agony as he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me. Yet not what I will, but what you will. And his tears fell as great drops of blood. The cup that Jesus spoke of was the cup of his Father's wrath against all the sin of the world. God's wrath in his unmitigated anger, a furious outpouring of condemnation, the fires and torments of hell. Jesus did not want to drink that cup. Perfect, sinless, holy Jesus, whose will was indomitable, prayed that he would not have to drink the cup of God's wrath. He knew his Father could change things. Death and decay and eternal suffering was not God's plan for humanity. Those are the consequences of Adam's fall, which involved us all, except for Jesus. He was sinless. He did not merit death. He didn't deserve to drink the cup of God's wrath. So his prayer certainly wasn't cowardly or faithless, but it was the language of faith in the God for whom all things are possible. But Jesus didn't stop at, Father, all things are possible for you. He continued, yet not what I will, but you will be done. And again he prayed, My Father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. And a third time he prayed the same prayer. And then the Father answered. While the Father could have removed the cup, the Father's will was for Jesus to suffer, to spare each of you. The Father answered Jesus' prayer by giving his Son the strength to accept his good and gracious will. And then the Son willingly went into captivity when Judas showed up to betray him. Moments later, Jesus said that all this was to be done to let the scriptures be fulfilled. Recall the well-known passage from Isaiah chapter 53, which is all about Jesus and the events of this night and the coming day. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. 
But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Why? Because it was God's will. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put into grief. When his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. And Jesus conceded to God's will, as it is written. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. Through Christ, God remains the one who is truly in control. And what happens next by God's grace is for our justification. Now those of us who are parents can I even begin to wrap our minds around how the Father could love us sinners enough to pour out his wrath against his own son. It torments us to see our children suffer. How could God kill his own son? We must receive the news with awe and thanksgiving that the Lord has done this to save us from our sins. We simply trust God's word, which says that his good and gracious will was to love us by sacrificing his only begotten son. But if the father eternally loves his son, and Isaiah's prophecy did not stop with the death of Jesus, it pointed forward to Easter, when Jesus appeared to the disciples, gazed upon them with living eyes, and said, Peace be with you. When he had said this, their eyes looked upon his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. His nail-marked hands speak of God's good will toward you and toward all sinners. Peace be with you. The scars on his hands reveal the good and gracious will of God. That peace between God and man had been made by him who was delivered up for our sin and was raised for our justification. And through all of this, Jesus had eyes only for his Father's will. And through this, fulfilled what he had told his disciples in John chapter 6. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. The good and gracious will of God is that you set your eyes upon his Son, believe in him, and have eternal life as a free gift. With that good news in mind, you can fall asleep in peace each night, even during these tumultuous times. We can awaken to serve him each morning. And when your eyes eventually go to sleep in death, be confident that they will awaken to everlasting life in the resurrection. Amen. May the peace which passes understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let, and let my cry come unto you. Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that our sins of thought, word, and deed deny your lordship over us. Forgive us all of our sins and give us strength each day to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow you. Almighty and everlasting God, you despise nothing you have made, and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and contrite hearts that lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, we may receive from you full pardon and forgiveness. Lord Jesus Christ, before whom all in heaven and earth shall bow, grant courage that your children may confess your saving name in the face of any opposition from a world hostile to the gospel. Help them to remember your faithful people who sacrificed much and even faced death rather than dishonor you when called upon to deny the faith. By your Spirit, strengthen them to be faithful and to confess you boldly, knowing that you will confess your own before your Father in heaven. 
We give thanks to you, our Lord Jesus Christ, that you, as the stronger one, have attacked and overcome the strong armored man, taken away his weapons and armor in which he trusted, spoiled his kingdom, cast out the prince of the world, and made a show of all of our enemies, triumphing over them through yourself. And we beseech you, O most beloved Lord Jesus Christ, mightily to curb and restrain the condemned, shameful filth, that he may not cast us down in presumption and doubt, nor wound us with his murderous arrows of predestination, apart from God's revealed word, and make us fearful and desperate because of the weakness of our faith or some other reason. O dearest Savior, grant us the power and strength hereby to overcome and beat back these and all his fiery arrows, and finally to obtain the crown of life and the imperishable wreath of glory in the life everlasting. O Father and God of all comfort, grant us by your holy word and spirit a firm, cheerful, and grateful faith, that we may blessedly overcome this and every distress, and finally taste and see that it is true when Christ, your beloved Son himself, says, Be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may set be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Hear us as we pray in his name, and as he has taught us. Our oh, Father, Father, who art Lord in heaven, heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.